Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I remember um, watching a popular show that uh, was back in the 70s as a kid um, about a guy who just seemed to be able to know everything. He was called the Amazing Kreskin. And actually, he's still around. He's in his 80s and he's still making predictions. But not with a crystal ball, and he's not a psychic. He always called himself a mentalist. And he uh, used acute uh, observing powers of, uh, you know, and psychological methods of reading people um, to make his predictions and, and do the things he would do. Like throughout his career, at every show, uh, beforehand, he would have the manager hide within the audience somewhere his paycheck. And then he had to find it. And somehow he found it in all these crazy places among the people. Only nine times did he, could he not find his paycheck and they didn't get paid. I don't get any ideas. <laughs> Although I'm pretty good at reading you. <laughs> yeah. Well, since even before the millennium, we have endured, I'll say endured again, repeated end time predictions, haven't we? The disciples wanted Jesus to just go ahead and tell us outright the day and the hour, if possible. And if you look at the uh, Matthew's chapter 24, this, the whole chapter is this end time talk. Followed by chapter 25 where Jesus tells parable after parable about getting ready. So this gospel today is a, is a good synopsis. It's a good little summary of um, both of these chapters in Matthew to keep awake and be ready. What does that mean? Well, this is how Advent actually begins. We, we think of Advent more as, you know, we're waiting for it to celebrate Christmas. But the first Sunday in Advent is about focusing us on Christ's coming again. And it's somber. It is. How do we get ready? Well, some people have taken getting ready to mean um, building and stocking an apocalypse shelter. I actually found a video, we're going to try to play it now, of a luxury apocalypse shelter that you can buy. We started manufacturing uh, underground bomb shelters in 2011, but I've been a prepper long before that. This is Galvanized Coordinated Plant. Basically, we're, we're inside a 10 foot diameter, 51 foot long Atlas survival shelter. And it has all the comfort stuff on it, such as 20 feet underground. You got a couch, you got a dinner table, desk, big screen TV, fridge, microwave. You got your regular flushing toilet, um, vanity, bathtub, shower. Well, the shelters are like a yacht going off to sea. They're self sustained. They have their own generators, they either have solar power, they have generators. And this shelter here has a bunk room for eight. You've got storage underneath the bed for all the personal cabinets. This is what's nice too. You have all your storage for all your food is stored underneath the floors. When, when you're underground for 90 days, I, the longest I spent underground was 11 days, okay? One thing you need is normalcy. You need to be able to get away from the other people in the shelter. So you want to have the shelter section off in the room, so I have a bathroom. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Normalcy, right. <laughs> uh, so what do you think? Do you think that's what Jesus means by being ready? An apocalypse-proof shelter. Luxury, no less. I mean, look at Jesus' words. He did not say to go build an ark again, right? This guy's talking about this being like a yacht or something. Now, the readiness Jesus is talking about is the readiness of our faith, of getting into a boat with Jesus and setting out into the waters with Christ. But we have a lot of things working against our getting ready and readiness. And just to start out with, I think we live in this age where um, there's so much that we can know. Although, if we think about it, it's really sideways. It's not the future, it's sideways. But instantly, we can know what's happening in other places all around the world, can't we? 
And through asking Siri or other search engines, we have vast amounts of knowledge available to us. Science, and particularly, I guess, astronomy, you know, predicts the, the courses of the stars and the lifespan of our sun, but then there's those meteors and asteroids tumbling around in the dark, aren't there, that could cause cosmic disaster for Earth. What can we know and what can't we know? Jesus tells us. He tells us that we cannot know the end. We cannot know when it comes, what hour or day it comes. That is for the Father to know. It's in the Father's hands. But we can know that it is coming. And be ready. He wants us to be ready with our faith. He gives us a couple examples in today's Gospel. Um, they're Gospels that are kind of the negative examples, so we have to work through them to see how to be ready. And the first one, um, he uses Noah's neighbors as an example, right? Noah's neighbors, what were they doing? They were carousing, they were um, living um, without regard to God, and some people make that choice. Living without belief in God, pursuing a life of self-interest and entertainment. But Christians, even for us, those temptations are knocking on our door all the time because we live in a society that is wealthy and comfortable and offers lots of entertainment. That's always knocking on our door, too, as a temptation. Instead of being in readiness, being stewards of the time and the resources and the life God's given us, caring for the creation for future generations, not squandering um, those resources, sharing generously with those in need, giving um, generously to God through biblical tithing. It's not that hard. But we have competing interests knocking on that door, tempting us. Faith reorients us. Faith alters our actions, and it alters the course of events. It does. But we might identify more with the second group of people Jesus identifies. Those who are toiling day after day out in the field or are working at home. One day starts to look like the next and the next and the next until it's just one big long rut. I think that's where we are a lot of times just trying to fulfill our obligations every day. And the problem with that rut is that we can get discouraged down there if we don't look up in faith. Look up and see Jesus is with us. And know that Christ has said our labor, he will multiply 30, 60, 100 fold for his kingdom in good works. And that he makes us to bear fruit that is good and fruit that lasts. And those are words, and that's a power, and that's a truth of Christ with us that puts joy into our hands and our work and makes our heart pump harder for those labors. It enlivens us. Faith in our daily toil alters it. It changes how we work and labor. And the course of events are changed. The third example is odd to me. It's this thief breaking into a hapless homeowner's house. And what's odd about this story is that blame is placed on the homeowner, the victim, not the thief. This is what Jesus says and does in this story, right? The homeowner is chided because he didn't take preventative measures and he wasn't awake, but he should have known better. That's the story. And so what Jesus again is talking about is we should know better. And we do because we know the end will come. That's a reality. That's an eventuality. And I've been working my way up to get to this somber part. <laughs> of Jesus' word for us today. 
Because he's going to come and it's either going to be coming in glory, the Son of Man descending in the final judgment in our time, or he's going to come to us when we breathe our last. Either way, we know. And he wants us to be ready, to live ready. Death can be like such a thief. Living in readiness is a way to be prepared. You know that's, that um, thought that begins, if I had only known. And sure, it could be something trivial like, if I'd only known we were out of milk while I was at the grocery store, I could have grabbed a couple gallons, right? But that's not usually how we, we think this thought. It is usually in anguish longing. If I had only known, I would have spoken up. I would have shared a word of encouragement. I, wouldn't, I wish I wouldn't have made that mistake. I wish I would have counseled or warned somebody. I wish if I had only known that I could change the course of events and even prevent a tragedy. You know, we all have a deep pain related to this, a deep loss, and we barely dare to let that pain out in the open. But I will, for a loss that Jim and I thought about, we, whenever we drive through the Lowry Hill Tunnel, we say prayers for a mother that died there. Paula was the mother of three sons in our Boy Scout troop. And uh, she was a nurse at Fairview University Medical Center. And she was active and full of life. One evening as she came home from work, her car stalled right outside that tunnel. And she called a co-worker, a younger nurse, who came with a, a can of gasoline, a good Samaritan. And they were trying to fill uh, Paula's car with gas. When on that fateful night, there was a police chase. And a man who was drugged and drunk and out of his mind and ignoring and not slowing down for the police charged into that tunnel way too fast, lost control, and crashed into these two women and they died. Like a thief, they were stolen. And such acute pain was felt by the whole community. <coughs> but Paula lived ready. She lived ready with her family, in our scout troop, with Hennepin United Methodist Church, as a nurse helping her patients. She lived a life of faith and lived a life that changed for good many other lives. And at the end, that unexpected end, Christ came. He came to alter that final course for her and welcome her into his kingdom. He is our eternal life. People of Maple Grove Lutheran, I see you living ready every week in beautiful ways. Advent 1 begins with this somber word, though, because we do get distracted. We do fall into the rut. We do get tempted. And that's why we come to church every Sunday and make time for Bible studies in small groups and live together so we keep being reminded again to stay awake, to be ready, and that God loves us in Jesus forever. So you saints of God, this first day of Advent, Advent, yes, it's jarring and it's abrupt and it's needed, our wake-up call, to give us the gift of attentiveness each and every day, to give us an enlivened faith, 
that alters the course of our daily life and events for good, for others, because the day of salvation is always near, near us in Christ. Live ready. Amen.